My name is Sugata Mitra and I am a professor of educational technology in the um, School of Education, Communication and Language Sciences at Newcastle University in England. And I live in this uh, city called Gateshead, which is across the river from Newcastle upon Tyne. My work uh, at the moment is about education, particularly education of children. Although I have no background uh, in education, no formal background in education, um, my formal background is in theoretical physics. So uh, some distance away from education, but uh, as things would turn out, uh, I have landed myself in an area which seems to be a cross between a certain part of physics and children's education or children's learning. Um, it happened uh, through a series of accidents really. The first of these was an experiment often called the hole in the wall where um, I, uh, this was done in 1999 and I had taken a, uh, a computer and uh, uh, you know embedded it into the wall of a, a wall dividing a slum in New Delhi uh, from, a, from my office. Uh, it was basically, it looked basically a bit like a bank ATM except that it was uh, about three feet off the ground. And naturally uh, children from the sl slum kind of gathered around it and in those days, 1999, they hadn't actually seen a computer nor did they know what the internet was and this con computer was connected to the internet. Anyhow, that experiment showed that it takes them only a few hours to figure out some of the things that a computer can do. For example, that you can play games on it or you can paint, you know, make pictures with it um, and that you can surf and go from website, one website to the other. Then, um, when I left it there for further, we discovered that after a while they, they bump into search engines. Actually, it's even easier today than it was at that time uh, 16 years ago. They bump into search engines and they find that they can find answers to things just by themselves. Uh, I continued to study this and discovered that groups of children left unsupervised with an internet connection can actually learn anything by themselves. Now naturally that, uh, that, that brings uh, a different question which is, uh, so then what are schools for? And I think that there is a very simple answer actually. Up until very recently, uh, if you ran into a problem and you needed to know something in order to solve that problem, you had to know it beforehand because yes, the answer to that problem might have been inside a library somewhere, but you could not have carried the library on your back. So you had to have people who would go through the library, decide a few books that are important that you may need one day in life and then spend several years with you to put the contents of those books into your brain so that just in case if you ran across a problem where you needed that book you did not have to carry it but you would remember. That situation changed just about a decade and a half ago to a situation where if you have a problem and you need to know something, you can get to know it at the point in time when you need it because you can now carry all the libraries in the world in your pocket. That difference is I think a very important difference for learning and for education. I kept experimenting with this over and over again and found that if we create 
a, uh, an environment called a self-organized learning environment, which is unsupervised, which has the internet in it, and if we put children into such an environment, they can quickly grapple with very important, difficult questions. If the questions are interesting, they go really far. And because there is nobody to tell them where to stop, you can have nine-year-olds go right through up to postgraduate university level uh, matter. I don't know where this is going to lead. And I don't know how the regular system is going to adapt to meet this new learning uh, scenario. Do we not need them anymore? Well, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. But I do know that we have one serious problem in the existing system, and that is the assessment system that we follow, the examinations. Those examinations are increasingly more and more irrelevant to life, if they ever were. What they ask you is often things to which there are standard answers. The reason being that you will have to have examiners who can quickly examine and tell you whether the answer was right or wrong. So if a question has a standard answer, a search engine will give you that answer in seconds anyway. So children don't see the point of these examinations anymore. We need to change the assessment system first. Because until we do so, the rest of the system is unable to change. Because it has to prepare children for an assessment system whose time has gone.